hey guys welcome back to my channel today i am going to take you guys on a little trip halfway across the world to learn about a particular animal that we are not familiar with in the caribbean this is one of the cool things about poetry you're able to live vicariously through the experiences and travels of others the title of the poem that we are going to be looking at today is The Dromedary. Now you might be asking, what is a dromedary? I've never seen one before, or maybe you have. That's a cute one, right? Now let's learn a little about the dromedary. The dromedary lives in the Middle Eastern deserts and North Africa. A population of camels live in Australia. Dromedaries are diurnal, meaning that they are daytime animals and spend their days eating. They are very clever at finding food in their harsh desert environment. Hundreds of dromedary camels have died from starvation and thirst. Also, there is a virus killing dromedaries. The dromedary. In dreams, I see the dromedary still, as once in a gay park I saw him stand. A thousand eyes in vulgar wonder scanned his humps and hairy neck and gazed their fill. At his land shanks, and mocked with laughter shrill, he never moved. And if his eastern land flashed on his eye with stretches of hot sand, it wrung no mute appeal from his proud will. He blinked upon the rabble lazily, and still some trace of majesty forlorn, and a coarse grace remained. His head was high, though his gaunt flanks with a great mange were worn. There was not any yearning in his eye, but on his lips and nostril, infinite scorn. The poem speaks of a dromedary at the center of an uncultured crowd. He is far from his native home and his experience moves the poet to pity and compassion. The person experiences firsthand the treatment of the dromedary. The crowd of visitors at the park that day did not give the dromedary the respect of an animal in captivity deserves. The park is cheerful, but no one is admiring the animals all staring blankly in vulgar wonder, mocking his appearance as his skin is diseased due to inadequate care at the park. They also mock his shape because the type of shape that he has is not one that they are accustomed to. In the last six lines of the poem, we can see that the dromedary is unmoved by this disrespect and mirrors the superior attitude, managing to maintain the majesty of his land. And we are assuming that he's from a Middle Eastern country, such as India or North Africa. Now let's answer the questions. Question 46. In lines 6 to 7, if his eastern land flashed on his eye with stretches of hot sand, what is the poet implying about the dromedary? The dromedary has been a driven from his native land in the east to the park, b thinking about his native land in the east, c blinded by the reflection from the hot sand, or d stretched out on the hot sand at the eastern end of the park. Based on this poem, we can imply that the dromedary was taken from his native land and brought to a different country for show. Basically, he was at a park and people were viewing him. So imagine that you are a dromedary 
and you were taken from your natural habitat and being placed into a place that you are not familiar with. Naturally, this would affect you because you are in an environment that you are not used to. So thinking about your native land would not come as a surprise. Therefore, the answer for this item is B. Question 47. The idea it wrong no mute appeal from his proud will, line 8, is repeated most nearly in A. He never moved, line 6. B. He blinked upon the rabble lazily, line 9. C. And a coarse grace remained, line 11. D. There was not any yearning in his eye, line 13. Even though the dromedary is in this environment where he's not free or appreciated and the onlookers are mocking him, it does not show on his face that he is missing his homeland. As I said before, the dromedary displays a superior attitude. And you know, this dromedary really teaches us a lesson that we ourselves can live by. Sometimes people may do things to you that you are not deserving of. It may cause you to feel as if you are unworthy. But at the end of the day, you have to maintain your composure and dignity. And that is exactly what the dromedary did. They were mocking him, but he was unmoved. Therefore, the answer is D. Question 48. It can be inferred from the poem that the author had A. Seen the dromedary only in dreams B. Only day dreamed about the dromedary C. Only heard travelers describe the dromedary D. Seen only one dromedary and dreamed about him Line 1 of the poem tells us that the author had dreams about the dromedary that he had seen at the park. So A would not be correct because he was at the park and had seen the dromedary. B is also incorrect because the poem did not say that he had only daydreamed about the dromedary. C is not correct either because he experienced the treatment of the dromedary firsthand. The answer is D. The author had seen only one dromedary and dreamed about him. Question 49. According to the poem, which of the following words describe the reaction of the people to the dromedary? A. Insensitive. B. Puzzled. C. Amusing or D. Threatening? In order to answer this question correctly, you need to look back at the poem and look at the words. In order to answer this question correctly, you need to look back at the poem for the words or phrases that show the reaction of the people. The first phrase that hints at the answer is vulgar wonder. This means that they were very impolite in their treatment or their reaction to the dromedary. The next bit that we need to look at is his humps and hairy neck and gaze their fill at his land shanks and mocked with laughter shrill. These two lines show us that they were very impolite. They mocked and they laughed at the dromedary simply because he had a form that they were not accustomed to. Let us define the words to arrive at the answer. A, insensitive means showing no feeling. It means that you're heartless. A puzzled means that you are confused. Amusing means funny. And threatening means scary or frightening. Based on these definitions, the answer would be A. Question 50. Which of the following characteristics does the poet not attribute to the dromedary? 
Is it A, isolated and diseased? B, towering and king-like? C, imposing and contemptuous? Or D, pitiable and mean? A is not the answer because he was definitely isolated and diseased. He was also very towering and king-like. Imposing and contemptuous? Yes, he was dignified and scornful. So the answer would be D. He was scornful, but he was not unkind. Question 51. Which of the following best expresses the theme of the poem? Is it A, the reaction of the people to the dromedary? B, the cruelty of keeping a dromedary captive? C, the dignity of a captive dromedary? Or D, the ugliness of a sick dromedary? The dromedary is a thick-skinned animal. It is unbothered by the treatment he receives from the onlookers because he knows that he is a majestic animal. So he maintains a king-like attitude even in captivity. So based on that analysis, the answer would be C. And now for the final question, question 52. Which of the following does the poet attribute to the dromedary? Is it A, majestic and proud? B, diseased and dignified? C, tired and homesick? Or D, vulgar and comical? The poet speaks very highly of the dromedary. Any negative thoughts that were presented in the poem came from the onlookers. He saw the dromedary as majestic and proud. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, share, comment down below, and subscribe. See you in my next video.